Hi, it's Lee and welcome to The Tesla Economist. I've really been trying to think about how the competition have a chance in the EV industry. So let's talk about why a new car buyer might buy something else over a Tesla. We'll assume the market has moved on and only wants electric at this stage. And there are possibly some remaining legacy auto companies that have made the transition and even profitably. Let's explore why they made it, how they did it and why people are buying their cars. Let's start with the upper market segment. People spending seventy to $100,000 perhaps, or even more. That's quite a lot of money. Now sure, obviously the smart money is to buy a Tesla. But to be honest, my buying a Tesla experience was actually underwhelming. Now I'm not saying this is necessarily bad, and perhaps Tesla will improve this. I just ordered online, talked to a salesperson on the phone, and transferred some money. Now I liked that process. It was simple and easy, no hassle, and didn't feel pressured by a salesperson. And obviously it also reduces costs in a massive way, i.e. no car dealership commission. Compare this to going to a BMW dealership where I might have spent an equal amount of money. I get to experience the car first, get a good idea for it. The salesperson deploy their sales tactics, boost your ego, make you feel special, like you deserve a brand new BMW, because you're awesome. And because they liked you, they're even going to offer you metallic paint at half the usual price. And then when your car arrives, you get to go in and pick it up. They show your brand new car, perhaps even with a bow on top, and they make you feel like you are a winner. It's a joyous occasion and they are there to celebrate it with you and add to the experience. When I picked up my Tesla, I had to go to some old industrial site and go into some old warehouse where there was no one to greet me. I had to ring a buzzer and then eventually I was greeted by a worker in dirty overalls who cared nothing about me or the car and just needed me to sign for it. Compare this to a well presented person in a suit at BMW in a tidy showroom. My car was just sitting in their gravel car park. There was no added experience. I mean, I was excited as anything, but no one else there who cared about my excitement to further encourage it. It may be different in other cities and I'm sure Tesla can work on this in time and I don't really care that much as I probably was excited enough either way. But this does mean more to some people. They need further validation of just how important they are and to reinforce their buying decision. Tesla are cutting costs everywhere that add no or minimal value to the vehicle. Instead, you get $100,000 of Tesla value, not spend $100,000 and suddenly the car is worth $80,000 immediately when you drive it off the car dealership. Which is why I could still sell my car even a year later for not too far off $100,000. Whereas a BMW might now be worth $70,000. Another example of pure Tesla value. Those are New Zealand dollars, by the way. I remember at university, one of my favorite courses I studied was consumer behavior about the psychology of marketing to people and why they buy such products. And this may very well be a certain personality type of people who need this attention and validation. It's more the ego in them making the buying decision rather than the accountant in them. On top of that, these legacy companies are great at convincing you to try the car in the first place with all their advertising and marketing. They're good at it and can convince plenty of people. They'll tell you why certain features are so important to you rather than range, performance, handling, features and safety. I think this will only work to some consumers and work with some brands. Brands that attempt to offer value may struggle as it's really difficult to beat Tesla on value. Sure, I understand not everyone can afford a Tesla, but for those who can, it's great value. A brand like Toyota may really struggle, even if they undercut Tesla, which may be really hard with future lower cost models, they'll still be the budget Chinese brands to undercut too. I see Toyota as a brand that will really struggle in the future for the transition. Now, another reason consumers may opt for an alternative brand over a Tesla is because they want their car to be exactly the way they want. I mean, just look at the available colors for the Porsche Taycan, about 15 different colors compared to Tesla's five. Tesla keep the colors basic as it reduces costs a lot. I mean, Ford took it to another level again when the Model T only was available in black. The after sale support on maintaining limited paint colors also reduces costs. Porsche offer a lot more options. You can have a Porsche almost any color which you might expect considering how expensive they are. But not only that, you can customize just about everything. An option of eight different types of wheel, then about 20 different interior colors, 
sports seats or comfort, then various exterior styling, like various spoilers added, or carbon fiber extras, or different colors. Various different drivetrains, different headlights, seat massaging, stereo upgrades. It just goes on and on. Whereas Tesla is pretty much fully optioned. And as a result, it's a lot easier on the production line. So you end up with a lot more options from a Tesla at a lower cost due to the economies of scale of all these options on every car. Plus, Tesla have chosen to add the options that are the easiest to manufacture, offer the most value, and at the lowest cost. So Teslas are for the masses, as it's the truest best value. But Tesla aren't able to cater to everyone's unique individual taste, or at least those who must have it their way, you know, like Burger King. But to have said customization, you're then foregoing the extra value offered by Tesla though, this huge economy of scale, and having to pay likely twice as much to have your own unique styling, and of course, with a vehicle that has less range and performance. And if the reason people are buying a Porsche over a Tesla is to be more unique, then it makes sense for Porsche to offer more unique customization to the car, as this is the type of consumer they're catering to. But that is how legacy can compete, or at least one way. But this is likely only for the more prestigious brands, for people who can actually afford all this customization. As for the mainstream brands like Ford, GM or Volkswagen, they're usually far less equipped than a Tesla, even when you do add all the extras. I mean, for example, I don't think you can get the option of ceramic brakes on a Volkswagen ID3. I think these are the manufacturers that will suffer. Brands that were aiming to offer value for mainstream markets as Tesla destroys them. They'll need to undercut Tesla in some way, which as we know, proves just so hard to do due to Tesla not only getting their manufacturing costs so low, it's literally impossible to compete on, but Legacy also have their other costs like unions, advertising, and of course, the car dealers. So if Volkswagen or the likes are able to make it, it will be very slim margins. I don't know if many people would want to go as basic as that without that much of a cost saving compared to the plethora of standard features that come with a Tesla for not much more money. And we generally think it will be the Chinese EVs that will take this budget EV market anyway, of which Tesla will eventually take a lot of that with lower cost models and robo taxis. However, the European manufacturers can play protectionism against the Chinese as much as possible to protect their European domestic sales. And sure, the likes of BYD can build cars in Europe too, but then they lose a lot of their advantage that they had with the low cost manufacturing coming from China. But everyone has a Tesla, or at least will do. Where I live before, anyone with a brand new car was kind of special. But now a lot of people have brand new Teslas. You aren't special, you don't stand out. Okay, when I got mine, I was one of the earlier ones, but there are so many more now. Sure, everyone else's are virtually all rear wheel drive versions, and I do have the performance, but no one can really tell. There isn't some massive body kit on my car or fancy air intakes to let people know that I have a more expensive, faster Tesla than everyone else. Tesla take the design of less is more. If you compare it to something like a Honda, then if it's a VTEC version, the performance equivalent then this type of consumer wants everyone to know. So they cover it in a high performance looking body kit compared to perhaps an Audi RS6, which still looks remotely something like a family station wagon, but the people who know what it is respect and appreciate it. But then a performance model three is very difficult to distinguish from a standard version, a lip on the trunk, some different color brake calipers, and that's about it. Teslas are not ostentatious. They have nothing to prove. Anyway, there probably will be consumers that will want a Hyundai or Volkswagen just because everyone has a Tesla, but will there be enough to support their production to high enough economies of scale that they're profitable? Well, that's what these companies are frantically trying to achieve, but it's musical chairs and Tesla are taking up more and more chairs with every factory they produce. The Chinese are too. Remember, China is the world's largest auto market and they are making EVs that are eating up the legacy's market share there too. When Tesla do eventuate to robotaxis though, I think the real market share that will be best to measure Tesla is the miles driven market share. The question is, will FSD be absolutely imperative to a car buyer? Are there enough people who can tolerate driving just so they can be in something other than a Tesla? And remember, although these alternatives may not totally drive themselves to a level you can watch Netflix or even Tesla Economist, it will be doing a lot more than they do today possibly around where Tesla's autopilot is currently. 
perhaps that will be tolerable enough for a lot of drivers. Perhaps other drivers simply never will trust a robot to drive for them. On the other hand, there may be plenty of baby boomers next decade that may not be able to drive and will end up relying on a Tesla to transport them. Then there are some people who just like to drive themselves because they thoroughly enjoy driving, like myself, although I still use autopilot constantly. And I've had high performance German cars and none were as close to as fun as my Tesla. Admittedly, I did drive a Lamborghini Huracan through Italy, which was a lot of fun, but a big price difference. But perhaps the likes of Lamborghini or the Germans could make some really great electric vehicles for drivers. However, in order to get that sort of performance required, they tend to sacrifice range and require larger batteries. The larger batteries then compromise handling. A 4680 structural Model 3 performance would handle absolutely exceptionally. So it would be tough to compete with. They could reduce weight with carbon fiber and other various more expensive lighter weight components. But then the price goes up quickly, changing it from a vehicle in a market segment to just a small niche. However, I was having dinner with a friend the other day and an Aston Martin DB11 pulled up outside. Now, remember, I am someone who had a penchant for cars before Tesla put them all into perspective, but I still appreciate the looks. Of course, the likes of the exhaust and engine make the thing look so antiquated, but still, it's like art to me as well. And the Tesla Roadster looks great too, but that is expensive and they won't make many. So I would say that there is a market for some really nice looking electric sports cars. The design can start with almost a blank canvas. No need to worry about a massive engine. Some serious design creativity could go into these cars. Of course, they'll have larger budgets and could afford the most energy dense batteries on the market. They should get some decent performance. Perhaps something similar to the Rimac. It gets 287 miles of range, which is better than the Porsche. Sure, they will all likely have less range than a Tesla, but charges will become more common and this probably wouldn't be used for everyday driving. And the owner can probably afford a more practical vehicle for longer distance driving, like a Model Y. And I hope they transition to this. I say the world would be boring if it was only Teslas that everyone drove. A lot of people express their individualism through the cars they drive. Although I always wanted something like a Lamborghini, the main thing that puts me off is the thought of the maintenance. Like needing a new clutch in a Ferrari for some ridiculous cost. It would stress me too much. However, if it was electric, well, all those issues would disappear. Not to mention a battery and motor that costs a lot less than a V12 Italian engine. I'm not sure why there is not more exotic electric sports cars already. Without that massive engine, there's also room for four passengers instead of two, which also adds value. Perhaps the electric DeLorean would be the start of this. Although those doors aren't gonna be easy for manufacturing. They didn't even go for the stainless steel look. If car manufacturing wasn't so difficult, I would love to have my own electric sports car company. And then there are some consumers who just simply don't like Tesla's designs. Tesla have chosen a design that is optimal for drag, manufacturing, utility, and yet using a design that will be as timeless as possible. So they don't need to continually refresh the look. This means they can get so many more economies of scale over time by refining the same design. On top of that, the three and Y share something like 70% of the same components as they are so similar in design. Yes, some people prefer the look of a Porsche Taycan over a Model S, but there's a reason Tesla can build them for about half the cost or something. Then of course, there'll obviously be some lower cost EVs. Even if the Tesla costs just 20% more, it's still too much of a stretch for some consumers. And then some people are also just loyal to particular brands. You know, like how some people loved having Nokia mobile phones. I know it's easy to think that Tesla will dominate the EV industry and they will because they obliterate everyone else's specifications. But I'm also trying to be realistic here. I'm not entirely sure all legacy autos will go under. My thoughts are that Porsche and Mercedes may have the highest chance of transitioning. I'm thinking though, it will be similar to the mobile phone industry. Perhaps Tesla end up with 50% global market share, similar to Apple in many markets, but take something like 80% of net profits due to their margins being outstanding. Of course, this is all highly presumptuous that there are even enough resources left for the rest of the competition after Tesla has had this decade or so ahead of securing supply chains. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.